question with sir gave so how we need to you know study and uh, preparation strategy then that's very important and one more important thing is uh, whatever we prepare on a daily basis so as on a madri let it be physics chemistry or whatever it is on a daily basis if you prepare you will have a lesser load when you come you know to the end of the uh, close to the uh, competitive exams so that is one important aspect so with that at note um, you know we'll begin the session so it's better to prevent and prepare than to repent and prepare so yeah so that is one thing so good morning guys we'll start off with today's lecture uh, let me share the screen yeah so i am sharing my screen so all are visible at the number so starting off uh, with the next chapter so we are uh, looking at oscillations today so what do you mean by oscillations so anybody in your own words you can say oscillation na enna ungala kurithu varilume yes motion motion okay so vibrating motion vibratory motion perfect so vibratory motion na oscillation solla okay now nama elaborate pannum bodhu vibrations na adu periodic a irukkuma illa non periodic a irukkuma periodic okay periodic vibrations okay so periodic na the repeat of so and frequent intervals it keeps repeating yes you call that as oscillation so in the physics la vandu we call this as repeated vibrations of a particle about with respect to time so adha nama vandu oscillations nu solrom சரி ஸோ அதுதான் நம்ம இன்றைக்கி பார்க்க போகிறோம் ஸோ வில் கோ லுக் இன் டு தி ஃபர்ஸ்ட் அனிமேஷன் ஃப்ரீக்வன்சி அண்ட் டிஸ்பிளேஸ்மெண்ட் இன் பீரியாடிக் மோஷன் ஹாவ் யூ எவர் அப்சர்வ் த மோஷன் ஆஃப் த பெண்டிலம் இன் அ கிளாக் ஓ த மோஷன் ஆஃப் அ கிளாக் ஓகே பார்க்க முடியுதுங்களா Okay, audible or audio? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Hands. Each of these bodies, that is, the pendulum and the hands, follow. Okay, let me share the, this one uh, tab. I think that is better. One more question. I think that is better. Full screen is not there. Full screen is not there. Full screen is not frequency and displacement in periodic motion motion have you ever observed the motion of the pendulum in a clock or the motion of a clock's hands each of these bodies that is the pendulum and the hands follow the same respective path over and over again with time even the earth revolves around the sun along the same path repetitively after certain time intervals this is also true of the moon which revolves around earth such a motion which repeats itself in regular time intervals is called periodic motion okay la so this is the basic introduction for periodic motion so when do you say a motion is in i mean a motion is periodic when it is going to repeat at frequent intervals of time or a repetition irundichu appadina and then you call that as a periodic motion examples on longle kuduthirukanga real life examples the pendulum of a clock pathina so anga the pendulum is in periodic motion the natural satellite of the earth moon eduthukittingana the moon makes a periodic rotation around the earth adhe mari the earth also is going to rotate or revolve around the sun so periodically so it then amount the periodic motion abin solrom so you can also give uh, real life examples so idha thavartha can you give me any other real life examples for periodic motion yarachu apart from these your own examples yes for periodic uh, motion sir heartbeat sir yes very good heartbeat solala yes okay so you have heartbeat very good apro 
swing swing pathukinga park la so swing can be an example so when i was when somebody is playing on a swing so it, it is also a periodic motion adu solala so suspended objects from a string when they are being oscillated so that is also a periodic motion so in a mari you can give real life examples wings of a bird so in a mari you can give your own examples seri so we'll move on we will study the mathematical representation of periodic motion in this animation okay so in poem then i'm in the animation mulema we are going to see how we can represent this periodic motion idu vandu eppadi represent seiyiradu mathematically vandu nam eppadi idu representation seiyano abingiradhu we will look at periodic motion repeats itself in regular or equal intervals of time the smallest interval of time after which the motion is repeated is called the time period t of the okay so very important the smallest interval at which the repetition has been repeated or the motion has been repeated you call that as time period so time period abingiradhu it is a time interval where the motion repeats again repeats itself all again all again so you call that as time period okay la so you call that uh, so time period can exist for the earth it can exist for the moon so and the mari time period can exist for those objects which are in a repeated motion or which which is in a periodic motion so adha namu vandu time period nu solrom so kurippitta and the time period la enna agum and the motion vandu thirumbi repeat agum so that is your time period so simple pendulum can have its time period the same way the earth can have its time period as well as moon also will have its own time period so adha da time period ambin solrom okay moving on periodic motion we can observe that the second hand of a clock comes back to its initial position after 1 minute hence the time period of the second hand is 1 minute okay so that is the time period of the second hand adhe mari can you tell me what is the time period of the hour hand clock la vandu hour hand irukum periya mullu periya mulloda time period anybody one hour is it one hour yes yeah so the one hour is the time period so accordingly namu vandu kandupidikkum good the time period of the minute hand is one hour and for the hour hand the time period is 12 hours earth undergoes two different periodic motions rotation about its own axis and revolution around the sun the period of earth's rotation around itself is about 24 hours whereas for the revolutionary motion around the sun the period is about 1 year notice that as time period is a measurement of time its si unit is second okayla so this is all about the periodic motion nam vand real life examples oda correlate panni just now we have done a comparative study so this is all about the periodic motion and what is time period abingiradha vand nam paathom so or clock poruthu varilume time period vand is different adhe vand if you look at the rotation of the earth the time period is all together different rotation or different revolution or different so rotation ku revolution ku enna vyathasam paathina rotation happens along around a fixed axis so or axis vand uh, there will be a rotation around a fixed axis axis so earth has got an axis around which it is going to rotate i mean with respect to which it rotates so rotation of the earth will only cause day and night but revolution is going to cause one full year one complete year ஒரு வருஷம் ஒரு வருடம் அப்படின்னு சொல்றோம் இல்லையா தட் இஸ் ரெவல்யூஷன் ரொட்டேஷன் 
rotation is causing day and night revolution is causing one complete year different seasons ellame gets covered so that is all about so adu ellame time period vandu namai ipo specific la paathom Oh, Instead of measuring the time taken by the motion to repeat itself, we can also measure the number of times the motion is repeated in a unit time. Then so inge vandu time period vandu if to look at time period for each and every you know motion that is being repeated instead of that it is better for us to see how many times it is being repeated the motion is repeated how many times in unit time okay so the number of uh, repetitive motions per unit time is called as frequency illana number of cycles per second is called frequency so frequency avandu namma inga or unit ah we are going to represent it so what is the si unit of frequency frequency oda standard unit enadhu how do we represent it very good hertz abdin solrom capital h and small z so hertz is the unit of frequency so frequency is nothing but number of cycles crossing per unit point per second is called as frequency it can be number of waves per second for ocean or sea ninga poninga na number of waves per second adhe mari it can be number of vibrations per second so adu vandu we call it frequency okay na so how frequently these uh, disturbances or how frequently the motion is occurring periodically that is called as frequency and per unit time so that is what is frequency here okay we'll go on number of times the periodic motion is repeated per unit time is called the frequency new frequency is the reciprocal of the time period Hence, its unit is per second. So frequency ये बंदे, नमा time period frequency को न time period को, there is a relationship. The relationship between frequency and time period is inverse relationship. So frequency is reciprocal of time period अभी हम चल रहे हैं. Reciprocal ना, if, what will happen if time period increases? What happens to frequency? The frequency is going to decrease. if one quantity decreases the other increases if the other decreases one will increase so that is the inverse relationship that is why we say frequency is reciprocal of time period so that is the relationship between both oh this unit is also called hertz after heinrich hertz the discoverer of radio waves one hertz is equal to one oscillation per second So one oscillation per second, you call it one hertz. There is a mean or equilibrium position which is generally associated with a periodic motion. It is the position at which the body will stay put in the state of rest if left undisturbed. So you पहले ना पढ़ रहा हूँ ना, so they are trying to explain equilibrium position. Now उनको क्या लाख में तेरी हो, equilibrium ना इन्ना दे. அப்படி நீங்க ஏற்கனவே படிச்சிருக்கீங்க லாஸ் ஆஃப் மோஷன் சாப்டர்ல யூ ஆல்ரெடி லர்ன்ட் வாட் இஸ் ஈக்விலிப்ரியம் சோ who can tell me what is equilibrium what is meant by equilibrium anybody யார்கட் சரிமா ஒரு ஆப்ஜெக்ட் ஈக்விலிப்ரியம் இருக்கு அப்படினா நம்ம என்ன என்னன்னு சொல்லுவோம் ஸ்டேட் ஆஃப் ரெஸ்ட் ஸ்டேட் ஆஃப் ரெஸ்ட் ஓகே அப்புறம் வித் ரெஸ்பெக்ட் டு தி ஃபோர்சஸ் ஆக்டிங் ஆன் தி பாடி வாட் will you say an object to be in equilibrium what are the forces the sum of all the forces acting with respect to the body will be zero net force vandu zero nu solluvom when an object is in equilibrium you say all the forces acting on the body would be zero so, or the net force is zero so inga enna eduthirukom inga picture la enna kaatranga they are showing as a pendulum a pendulum is a simple construction using a metallic bob or a metallic bob use panni or string use panni adha suspend pannirukanga so and when it is moved you can see that it is in oscillation it is moving left coming right left and right so it comes it starts oscillating ana it will st- it will stop after some time who can tell me why the pendulum stops yeah yeah the todarchiya oscillate aite irukalame edhuk adu nikkanum evlo force kudutumo evlo work சரி நான் நிறைய ஃபோர்ஸ் கொடுக்குறேன் ஃபார் எக்ஸாம்பிள் ஐ எம் கோயிங் டு புஷ் இட் வித் அ ஃபோர்ஸ் ஆஃப் சே 500 நியூட்டன்ஸ் டு யூ திங்க் இட் கீப்ஸ் ஆசிலேட்டிங் ஃபார் எவர் 
it stops in some point of time but why adha da enoda kelvi why does it stop yes so ninga ellame free body diagram ellame padichirpinga so what is the forces that come into picture for a pendulum ipo na vandu ipo inda position la vandu nama idha idha freeze panni vekkalam so if we freeze at this position it is in extreme position now ungalku i think you guys know what are extreme positions and mean positions theriyuma what is extreme and what is mean position kelvi pattukingla yes sir yes so here extreme positions are nothing but the positions where the bob is in the extreme ends when during the oscillation oscillatory motion so when they are oscillating if they are at the extreme left or at, at the extreme right you call that as extreme positions okay va well, mean position is at the center position that is probably the when it comes to the middle you call that as mean position ipo ipo vandha in the figure la pathinga na the pendulum is at the extreme position when it when it is at the extreme position what are the forces that are acting on this pendulum or acting tensile. on the metallic bob yes tensile force gravitational force yes tension force is acting towards the ring string or towards the rope with which it is tied to the ceiling so tension would act upwards towards the string where it is tied that is one force yes second one the is weight nam ellarkume theriyum we are doing all experiments on the earth so earth one the is having some gravity so or gra- yeah, or gravity or gravitational force so it is pulling all the objects illaya so according to newton's law of gravitation so therefore weight is going to act vertically downwards isn't it so acceleration due to gravity would get multiplied by the mass you get the weight so w is equal to mg so that is one force isn't it so that is one thing which would act so therefore in the gravity when the act aradunal the pendulum vand eppome oscillation la irukad after some time the uh, the pendulum would come to rest eventually seriya so it will come to rest but that is not the case with pendulums in clocks that is a different story there so anga vand it takes certain time because you know it is set into motion in such a way that it is maintained in periodic motion for a long period of time there is an external force given to it in in periodically so adanal it will it will remain in oscillations for a longer period of time so that is the idea okay sorry so we are moving on ipo equilibrium position pathinga na when the pendulum is at rest so rest la irukum bodu adu straight ah irukum so weight is going to balance the tension so t is equal to mg nu nam solalam ana extreme position la irukum bodu nama t equal to mg nu solla mudiyadu yena they are they are not opposite to each other your uh, tension is acting angular isn't it it makes an angle theta to the vertical plane so nama enna pannuvanga we will resolve it into horizontal and vertical components is it, you know how to resolve vector into horizontal and uh, vertical components last yes, time we learned about it right t yes, sin sir. theta and t cos theta so inge vande what will happen which which component is going to act t cos theta would act vertically upwards that is a vertical component of your tension and t sin theta is a horizontal component so resolve panninga na so t sin t cos theta is going to resolve is going to balance the weight of the pendulum in the extreme position so nama eppadi eludruvom equations you will write the equation as t cos theta is equal to mg so t is equal to mg by cos theta appi eludruvom so idella ninga erkenave padichadha laws of motion la ninga paatha or concept so that is what was going to happen in the extreme position so if we are going to displacement of the pendulum kuda we will we are going to represent using the laws of motion we will see how it is done okay so we had a quick recap of all the concepts so we'll move on the displacement variable is the measure of a time varying physical quantity at any given instant for a given periodic motion this time varying periodic physical quantity can be position angle voltage pressure and other such quantities associated with a given periodic motion for example in case of the simple pendulum the angle which the string makes with the vertical 
can be regarded as a periodic displacement variable. So, again, so long as theta of t, theta of t, na time vary ahead, theta on change ahead. That is the meaning. So, theta is changing with respect to time. So, therefore, we can represent theta as a function of time. So, that's what we're going to do. சரிங்களா நீங்க ஏற்கனவே படிச்சிருப்பீங்க டிஸ்பிளேஸ்மெண்ட் அஸ் ஃபங்க்ஷன் ஆஃப் டைம் எஸ் ஆஃப் டி ஆர் எக்ஸ் ஆஃப் டி ஸோ அதே மாதிரி வெலாசிட்டி அஸ் அ ஃபங்க்ஷன் ஆஃப் டைம் கேன் பி எக்ஸ்பிரஸ்ட் வி ஆஃப் டி ஸோ அதே மாதிரி இங்கே வந்து ஆங்கிள் அஸ் அ ஃபங்க்ஷன் ஆஃப் டைம் கேன் பி எக்ஸ்பிரஸ்ட் அஸ் தீட்டர் ஆஃப் டி ஸோ ஆஸ் டைம் சேஞ்சஸ் வாட் இஸ் ஹேப்பனிங் டோன்ட் யூ திங்க் ஆங்கிள் இஸ் சேஞ்சிங் இஸ் இன்ட் இட் ஃப்ரம் ஜீரோ இட் இஸ் இன்க்ரீசிங் திரும்பியும் அது ஜீரோ ஆகுது அதுக்கப்புறம் டிக்ரீசிங் ஸோ தே ஃபோர் வி கேன் எக்ஸ்பிரஸ் அஸ் அ ஃபங்க்ஷன் ஆஃப் டைம் புரியுதுங்களா ஸோ ஐ ஹோப் யூர் ஏபிள் டு அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் ஸோ திஸ் கேன் பி எக்ஸ்பிரஸ் அஸ் அ ஃபங்க்ஷன் ஆஃப் டைம் ஸோ அதுதான் நம்ம பீரியாடிக் ஃபங்க்ஷன் அப்படின்னு சொல்கிறோம் ஸோ வில் சி ஹவு டு எக்ஸ்பிரஸ் திஸ் ஃபார் அ பிளாக் அட்டாச்ட் டு அன் ஆசிலேட்டிங் ஸ்ப்ரிங் த டிஸ்பிளேஸ்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் த பிளாக் வித் ரெஸ்பெக்ட் டு த மீன் பொசிஷன் அபவுட் விச் இட் ஆசிலேட்ஸ் இஸ் எக்ஸ் அட் டி இன் அ கெப்பாசிட்டர் the voltage varying with time can be considered as representing the periodic displacement variable a voltage varying with time can be considered as representing the periodic displacement variable in a sound wave the pressure variation as a function of time can be considered as the periodic ஸோ இங்கே பார்த்தீங்கன்னா திஸ் இஸ் அன் எக்ஸாம்பிள் ஆஃப் அ ட்ராங் அ ட்யூனிங் ஃபோர்க் அப்படின்னு சொல்லுவோம் ஸோ வென் த ப்ராங்ஸ் ஆஃப் அ ட்யூனிங் ஃபோர்க் அப் பீன் டிஸ்டர்ப் வென் தே ஆர் பீன் ஆசுலேட்டட் வாட் ஹேப்பன்ஸ் இட் ஸ்டார்ட்ஸ் செட்டிங் இன் டு வைப்ரேஷன்ஸ் ஸோ தேர் இஸ் அ வைப்ரேட்ரி மோஷன் ஸோ வாட் ஹேப்பன்ஸ் சவுண்ட் இஸ் ப்ரொடியூஸ்ட் சவுண்ட் வந்து இஸ் அ ட்ரான்ஸ்வர்ஸ் வேவ் ஆர் அ லாங் ட்யூடினல் வேவ் வாட் வாட் கேட்டகரி டஸ் சவுண்ட் கமண்டர் மோஷன் <laughs> and the direction of vibrations of the wave they are parallel to each other so you can see how you can represent them periodically as a function of time so in the pressure variations can also be expressed as p of t so other than they are showing here okay la so that is all about this the displacement variable while the sound wave travels so as it is traveling nam ena paathom you can see that the disturbances in sound is traveling so therefore the disturbances are, be- are because of the vibrations of the fork of the tuning fork so you can see that there is sila regions la vand compression irundhuchu sila regions la vand there was rare fractions so the combinations of compressions and rare fractions is what is helping the sound wave to move from one place to another so the displacement of the sound wave is due to the pressure variations caused by the tuning fork so the air molecules surrounding it is they are getting vibrated and therefore those vibrations are passed on from one part to another seringa so you can express that as a periodic function of time to a point the pressure at that point keeps varying periodically so here the pressure function represents the displacement variable of the periodic motion of oscillating air particles the displacement variable thus represents the characteristic time varying periodic motion of a body okay la so idala this is all about the concept we saw so now we learned that the the time varying quantities can all be expressed as periodic functions that is using a displacement variable displacement variable na with respect to time the variable changes its position and comes back to its original position இப்போ நீங்கள் எனக்கு சொல்லுங்கள் வாட் ஹேப்பன்ஸ் டு தி ஃபார் எக்ஸாம்பிள் யூ டேக் அன் ஆப்ஜெக்ட் இஸ் மூவிங் இன் அ சர்க்குலர் பாத் சரிங்களா யூனிஃபார்ம் சர்க்குலர் மோஷன் ஆஃப் அன் ஆப்ஜெக்ட் ஹேவிங் மாஸ் எம் கேஜி அண்ட் ரேடியஸ் ஆஃப் ஆர் 
So, what is the displacement of the object if the object starts from point A, makes one complete circular revolution and comes back to its original point A in 5 seconds? So, what is the displacement of that object? An object makes one... An object makes one complete revolution and comes back to its original position in five seconds. Okay? So, circular motion, uniform circular motion. So, what is the displacement of the particle? Yes? Five seconds. Huh? Five seconds. No, it is not five seconds. Anybody? Is it five? That is the time. Time period is correct. time period. What I asked is displacement. Displacement the naketa. What is it? Zero. Exactly, zero. You know, there is no... Is there any change in the initial and final position of the object? There was no change, isn't it? So displacement, one the, how can you write? Final position minus initial position. That is the general representation. Isn't it? So there is... You say displacement is zero if it's going to come back to its original position. Okay? So that is that is one important aspect. So let's move on. We can express the periodic displacement variable in the form of a mathematical function. Like we see here, the displacement variable of a loaded spring can be represented by a sine wave. One of the... So, the periodic representations can be used or represented using mathematical functions. One sinusoidal waveform use pani nama represent panala or a simple or a string or a mass if you are going to suspend a mass over a spring apro nama the mass uh, if you are going to pull it downwards what happens the mass is going to be set in oscillatory motion or vibrational motion and you say that those or that oscillation or vibration is periodic with time so, apo periodic functions are used panni, represent panala. So, sine wave is one such periodic function whose time period varies with respect to time. Whose representation? You can see a wave abdi on, abdi na, inga paak inga, it reaches a maximum point from zero and the start agri. Or a sine function. So, zero and the start agi, it is reaching a maximum peak. So, the highest point that a function can reach in time period t is called as the crest of the waveform. So there are crests which are occurring for the time period for this function, sine waveform. So crest and there are troughs. Trough na, the, the depth, the maximum depth that a periodic function can reach or a, or a waveform can reach. Other than the trough abdin solro. T R O U G H. So crest abdin number, then you know what is a trough. The highest peak is called the crest and the lowest peak or the lowest, uh, the depth is called as trough. And the maximum height that a waveform can reach, the displacement, the vertical or the vertical displacement in the positive plane, you call that as amplitude. That is called wave amplitude. Apo wavelength na na One complete cycle, okay, the distance traveled by the waveform in one complete cycle is called one wavelength. So, one crest or a trough you can fully consider it, that is one full wavelength. So, physics, the wavelength is represented using a Greek alphabet called lambda. So, lambda is a representation for wavelength. So, that's why we have to talk about Okay? So, this is a sinusoidal waveform or a sine wave that ranges from 0 to 2 pi. So, every uh, 2 pi, you can see one uh, waveform or one wavelength is being completed. So, 0 to 2 pi, one wavelength, that is a time period. So, 3 to 4 pi is the next uh, wavelength is getting covered, or 6 pi. So, you can see at even multiples of pi, there is wavelengths of the wavelength being observed for a sinusoidal wavelength, for a sinusoidal waveform. You can see the wavelengths occurring at even multiples of pi. So, that is the periodic function simplest periodic functions is f of t is equal to 8 sine omega t. From the graph, we can observe that the value of this function is the same if we increase the value of omega t by 2 pi. Hence, 
we can say that the function f of t is periodic. Its period t is 2 pi by omega. So, period of the waveform can be expressed as 2 pi by omega. That is the representation. Yana omega is 2 pi by t. So, rearrange pannana, t is equal to 2 pi by omega. Abdingar or relationship namak kadekhi. So, that is the time period of a periodic function. So, omega vandhi nama angular frequency in solro. T vandhi we call it as capital T is nothing but time period. Small t inga use pannit kanga pannit graph la. So, that is called the uh, instantaneous time. So, at that particular time where what is the value or what is the function. So, initial values so that is all about. Okay. So we understood that the representation of this waveform can be expressed as a sinusoidal waveform. So sin omega t. Omega is angular frequency and f small f when the linear frequency in Solron. What is the relationship between angular and linear frequency? Omega when the is nothing but 2 pi f in Solron. So that is the formula for angular and linear frequency relationship. So I repeat, so uh, relation between omega and linear frequency f is omega is equal to 2 pi f. So already nama paatho, f is nothing but reciprocal of time period. Yeah, so f at the 1 by t potu kla. So apo enna ago, omega vandhu 2 pi by t abdi in relation nama So that is why we understand that omega is 2 pi by t and t is nothing but 2 pi by omega. You should do a rearrangement, you will get t is 2 pi by omega. So that is all about the relationship. We will proceed further. Similarly, f of t equal to a cos omega t is also a periodic function with a period of 2 pi by omega. A combination of these functions will also be periodic f of so cos omega t or cos function cosine function is also periodic so cos function did not start from origin it started from one directly so that is the only difference from where they originate the point of origination is different for both cos and sine functions otherwise they are almost the same so you can see that the periodic uh, you know the time period is is changing for cos and for sine so, all of them. You know, the start, that, that varies. Their origination, originating point varies and therefore their time period is also changing. Oh, that's all about it. Now, we have two functions. Cos function or sine function. So, you can see that the combination of these two waves, the combination of cos and sine can be expressed as a resultant wave. The resultant waveform is also periodic with time period T. So therefore, sum of two waves can be expressed as the sum of the equal to the resultant wave. So that is also one example of how you can say that the waveform is periodic with function t, where t is 2 pi by omega, where omega is angular frequency and capital T is the time period of the waveform. Oh, so this is how you can express it. T is equal to a sine omega t plus b cos omega t. So, in the Munadi, when the a from b in solely render letters, and the letters are meaning another sine omega t or cos omega t. They are nothing but the waveforms. Yeah. But what about the t, uh, the a and b, which is present before them? That is representing. Very good. That is representing amplitude. So amplitude of Dingrida, I already told you, it is nothing but the maximum height, the height reached by the waveform. The displacement of the waveform with rest from its origin of the waveform is called as amplitude of the waveform. So sine function has got an amplitude of A, wherein cosine function they are representing with amplitude of B. So that is the amplitude of the waveform. Okay. It has the same period, that is 2 pi by omega. Let us take A as d cos phi and B as d sin phi. On simplifying we get f of t as d sin omega t plus phi. Where d 
is the square root of a square plus b square. So, in the part, they are going for a representation. So, for the resultant waveform are represent they are expressing the way the amplitudes a as d cos phi and b as d sin phi. They are trying to represent. So, if represent panna so where phi is nothing but the phase, phase angle, phase representation abdin chalu. So the common phase abdin which kranga resultant wave or phase when the phi abdin at kranga. Abdin at kum bode. So resultant wave can be expressed as d cos phi sin omega t and d sin phi cos omega t abdin express pani kla. Okay kla. So inge when they are representing like that. So apo resultant wave when the can be expressed as d sin omega t plus phi. So phi is nothing but the phase angle of the resultant waveform. So that is a phase angle that needs to be known. If we have a mathematical relationship use panni, we simplify it. Mathematical formulas you can learn. Cos theta 2 sin a cos b, 2 cos a sin b, that is use it. Sin of a plus b by 2 and to cos of a minus b by 2 and the formula varu. So you can represent that. So you can express that as omega t plus phi. So that is what you can do it. So you can get the resultant waveform as a function of time can be expressed as d sin omega t plus phi, where phi is your phase angle. So and the d one the another d is nothing but the amplitude of the resultant wave. So can be expressed as the square, the sum of the squares of the amplitudes of individual waves that are there. So individual wave on the end of the sign and cause one was individual waves. So resultant wave amplitude one can be expressed as the square root of squares of individual waves a square plus b square. So thin meaning a boy at express panning a a square at a a at the learning a d cos phi putting an n ago you get d square cos square phi plus b at the if you put d sin phi you will get d square sin square phi. d square on the common out. Yeah. So if you take common out, cos square phi plus sin square phi is equal to 1. Cos square theta plus sin square theta. Trigonometric identity. So 1 over. d So don't you think the relationship holds good? d is equal to under root a square plus b square. Isn't it? The relationship holds good. Yes. So that is how you can express the amplitude of the resultant wave. This is mathematics. So we are going and substituting the values and seeing that the trigonometric values are holding good for the given functions. You can also find out the phi angle as tan inverse b by a. So you can form a vector triangle by using vectors a and vectors b and vector d. So vector d is a resultant of both the vectors a and b, where it forms a right angle triangle. So what is a? With respect to phi, is a adjacent side or opposite side? Can you please draw the triangle and tell me? With respect to phi, angle phi, the phase angle, is A adjacent side or opposite side? A and will be, yes. So if you have a notebook, you can just draw it and tell me. Try it easy though. So what is A with respect to angle phi? Is it adjacent or is it opposite? Displacement, the amplitude is again a vector quantity that can be expressed. So, with respect to it, how do you express it? So, A vandu is going to be adjacent. Ilya. B will be on opposite side. So, A is adjacent and B is opposite. And what about D? D is nothing but the resultant of A and B. Okay, the resultant amplitude. So, you can express using the vector triangle. Very, very important. So you can express using a vector triangle method. Already you have learned triangle of vector addition. And phi is tan inverse of B by A. Thus, any periodic function can be expressed as the superposition of sine and cosine functions of different time periods with suitable coefficients. So by changing the coefficients, you can express any periodic functions as summation of sine and cosine functions. So we have a expression could have very similar to that. So we could express, we could successfully express the resultant periodic function f of t 
as the sum of the individual sine and cosine functions. Okay? So we can express by just changing the appropriate coefficients or the variables, that is your time period or omega, you can express any periodic function using the sum of sine and cosine functions. So all of that. So therefore, the resultant wave also would have the relationship. The resultant amplitude can be expressed as d is equal to square root of a square plus b square. You can also find out the phase angle of that resultant wave using the relationship phi is equal to tan inverse of b by a. So using that relationships, we can find out where a and b are the amplitudes of individual periodic functions of sine and cosine. So the, in the, this is all we have covered so far. Done a part so we'll go ahead. All right. Now let's quickly take a look at the important concepts pertaining to periodic motion. So it is now a summary. Just a summary of what we have learned so far. So what is meant by a periodic function? Okay, a motion that repays itself uh, is called as periodic motion. We saw that a small interval of time where the motion is repeated. You know that that is called as time period. Then we looked at frequency, frequency in another. So the, the number of times that the vibrations or motion is being repeated with respect to unit time, you call that as frequency. The SI unit of frequency is hertz or second inverse. Ade Mari, you have periodic motion where it is displacing or time varying physical quantity with respect to equilibrium position. So it will come back to its original position in a repeated time. If an object comes back to its original position in unit time or repeated time, you call that as a periodic motion. So, and periodic motions can be expressed as sine functions or cosine functions. And when you have two sine, when you have one sine and one cosine function uh, simultaneously, the resultant of those two functions can be expressed as the sum, a, sum of the individual periodic function sine and cosine. So, this is all we learned so far. Okay, so with that, we move on to the next module. So periodic motion when then I'm a complete path on. So we learned what is a periodic motion. So now we will move on to the next part. Go to simple harmonic motion. Simple harmonic motion. Motion of the minute hand in a clock. Motion of the earth around the sun. What is common in these motions? The motion repeats after regular time intervals. The movement of the minute hand in a clock is periodic and its period is 60 seconds. The Earth takes approximately 365 days and 6 hours to revolve around the Sun. Thus, periodic motion is a motion which repeats itself after equal intervals of time. For example, a pendulum moving back and forth is set to execute a periodic motion. Our heartbeat is a periodic motion as it repeats approximately after every 0.86 seconds. A vibrating guitar string is a periodic motion. So in LMA, we are looking at different examples of periodic motion. So there is a path in the heartbeat or something So guitar. Okay, so vibrations of the guitar or the stringed instruments, heartbeat or the pulse rate. So these are all examples of periodic motion. Okay. Observe the movement of a swing. This is an oscillatory motion. An oscillatory motion is one in which a body moves to and fro repeatedly about a mean or equilibrium position. Equilibrium or mean position is the position at which a body remains balanced 
as there are no forces acting on it. A body is said to vibrate or oscillate only when it possesses inertia so that it can move across the midpoint of its path. The frictional force acting on the body is minimal. There exists a force called restoring force that can accelerate the body towards its center. All oscillatory motions are periodic motions, but all periodic motions need not be oscillatory motions. Okay, so it is our relationship. So oscillatory motions, we call them periodic, but not necessarily the converse is not true. So even then we look at different examples or swing the papata, so where it is going to oscillate to and fro about its mean position. So mean position is nothing but the equilibrium position where all the forces acting with respect to the body is said to be zero and then therefore you say that it is going to be at rest. But when a force is applied and the object is set in to be in motion, it starts oscillating about its mean position. So the extreme position koi, thirumbi mean position varo, thirumbi in the side, right side extreme position koho, again it comes back to its mean position. So therefore, you call that as an oscillatory motion. Appo, nama oru oscillation abdingrada, yada solluvo. When do you say that the, you know, swing completes one oscillation? One oscillation with respect to a spring. So what is that called? If it goes to the extreme position on the left, comes to its mean, go back to extreme and comes back to a, to the mean position, then you call that as one oscillation. So that is one complete oscillation. Going to extreme and coming back to the other extreme position successfully, you call that as one oscillation. Okay, moving on. One such example is the Earth's motion around the sun. This is a periodic motion, but not oscillatory. Okay, yeah. So that is an example, that's it. So moving on. A harmonic motion is an oscillatory motion, which can be expressed in terms of a single harmonic function, such as sine or cosine function. By simple harmonic motion, we mean a harmonic motion, which is the simplest of all kinds of oscillatory motions. Thus, a body is said to execute a simple harmonic motion if it moves to and fro about a fixed point, that is, the equilibrium position under the action of a restoring force which is directly proportional to the displacement of the body. The restoring force is always directed towards the equilibrium position and hence is opposite to the displacement of the ball. So, the restoring force, you know, restoring torque, I've been so wrong. So, the force which is going to Proportional, but they are opposite. Adhanala da, they are represented using a negative force. And there is a displacement also which is observed. So what we try to understand here, the force is going to act downwards, the spring is going to expand. Then what happens? The restoring force of the spring is going to act upwards. Therefore, the spring is going to retract the object in the opposite direction, in the upward direction. So therefore, it comes back. So this is how the expansion and compression of the spring is going to work and form a, a, a periodic motion with respect to time. So this is periodic in nature. Oh. Another example of simple harmonic motion is the oscillation of a tuning fork. The motion of a tuning fork and spring mass system 
exhibit linear simple harmonic motion as they occur under the restoring force. Observe a freely suspended magnet placed in a uniform magnetic field and oscillation of a torsion pendulum. These motions exhibit angular simple harmonic motion as they occur under the restoring torque. Do you think all these simple harmonic motions are periodic? So we will now analyze that, whether it's all going to be periodic or not. Tingla, go to the next part. Consider a simple pendulum suspended from a rigid support. A small bob of mass M is attached to a thread. Let L be the length of the pendulum. When the bob is displaced slightly and released, it starts oscillating about its equilibrium position, where it moves to and fro about the fixed point under the action of the restoring force. Let's consider the bob at the A at some instant of time. Let us assume that the distance OA is equal to X. Also, let the angle made by the thread of the pendulum with the vertical be theta. The forces acting on the pendulum are the gravitational force Mg and the tension T in the thread. We resolve the components of the gravitational force as shown. Okay, you are talking about resolve. The forces are resolve. So, theta is the angle made by the string of your pendulum with respect to the vertical plane. So, theta is the angle made by the string of your pendulum. So, the vertically downwards, mg is going to act opposite to the direction of your tension. mg cos theta component will act. mg sin theta would act in the direction of main position or equilibrium position. So, if you have all the forces resolved, if you are going to express all the forces, so this is how you get it. And when you go for resolution of the vectors. So, resolution of vectors, you can learn. So, you want me to explain the resolution of vectors separately? You can learn how to resolve the vectors in the vertical and the horizontal plane. Yeah, I hope that is fine. Okay, great. So, if you resolve it, you can resolve it. You can resolve it. You can resolve it. You can resolve it with respect to theta. So, weight when the mg is acting vertically downwards, but it makes an angle theta with the Vertical plane, they are resolving the weight component mg with respect to horizontal and vertical components. The horizontal component of the weight mg is nothing but mg sin theta. After vertically downward component becomes mg. So, in the component of mg is balancing the tension in the string, which component is going to balance when it is in the extreme? Mg cos theta. Yes, perfect. Mg cos theta is balancing. So, we have the equation here. T minus mg cos theta is equal to? Zero of the nilada. So when you write that T minus mg cos theta is zero. So what is T? So tension is nothing but mg cos theta in this case. So that is all about resolving and then finding out one of the values. The bob moves along a circular path and the resultant of the tension force and mg cos theta provides the necessary centripetal force for this circular motion. The restoring force is provided by the component of gravitational force mg sin theta. So, if you look at the necessary centripetal force is provided by the bob. If you consider the entire circle along which the bob is going to move. So, centripetal force is an inward seeking force. It is directed towards the center when an object is moving in a circle. So, if you look at the circle, an object travels in a circle. There is a force that acts towards the center of the circle. And the force is the centripetal force. So, centripetal force is the formula of mv square by r. Where r is the radius 
along which the object is making a circular motion. So, in the end, mv squared by l in put kranga because l is nothing but the fixed length along which the bob is going to rotate. So, therefore, that is going to act as the radius in this case, thereby transforming the formula as mv squared upon l. So, this is going to be balanced by the centripetal force abding abding rather than p minus mg cos theta is equal to mv squared by l. So, this is the relationship that we get. And the restoring force, restoring force, now which is the force that is bringing back the bob to the extreme position, that is the force acting, which is pulling the bob to the equilibrium position. The the force that is pulling the bob to the equilibrium position is nothing but the mg sine theta force. And don't you think restoring force would be opposite in nature? They are equal and opposite, according to Newton's third law. Therefore, you write F is equal to minus mg cos theta. So here also you apply the Newton's third law. So centripetal force के अंदर वो Newton's law use पनीर कांगा Newton's second law use पनी they have written the uh, formula and here they have used Newton's third law every action has equal and opposite reaction they have used it and written the restoring force formula so purely by using Newton's equations we can arrive at these two relations so इंगला so this is all about it so by simplifying further you can get the final relationship we'll see it. The negative sign indicates that the restoring force acts in a direction opposite to that of the displacement. That is, it is directed towards the equilibrium position. Now, the angle theta is small. Hence, sine theta is approximately equal to theta. Using geometry, we get the value of theta as shown. So theta वंदे by using geometry in the sense और triangle form आ गए थे। So उंगली तेरी हो लिया। Theta is nothing but the trigonometric ratio of sine, isn't it? What is the trigonometric ratio sine? Adjacent by hypotenuse, opposite by hypotenuse. Opposite by hypotenuse. Opposite by hypotenuse. Yeah, opposite by hypotenuse. Use पन रंगा। Oh yeah, upon AP is what is what being used. Opposite upon hypotenuse equalization. Sorry, ma'am. That's what they're doing. Substituting the value of theta, we get the restoring force as shown. The restoring force in this case is as shown. This equation follows the general form of Hooke's law. Comparing the two equations, we get so Hooke's law. And the F is equal to minus k x. Hooke's law. La, and the na ma and the restoring force. And the minus x use pani represent panro. Where k is nothing but the spring constant. Or spring ko or constant value based on the material by which the spring is being manufactured. So and the k and the spring constant. X and the you know that that is nothing but the displacement function. So x is nothing but the displacement, or you can say how this uh, the Extension the spring or elongation spring in कोड़ा सोला so that is x so आधा वंदे नमक compare करने मोड़े restoring force वाला नमक अंदर इंगे वंदे अंदर k value we get it as mg upon l so this is nothing but the constant of the pendulum pendulum constant अब दिन सोला so here this is the constant of the
At time t, the angle made by the position vector of the rod with the positive direction of the x-axis is omega t plus phi. The projection of OP at time t on the x-axis is OP dash. Let the position of P dash be denoted by X. Using trigonometry, we know that cos of an angle equals adjacent side divided by hypotenuse. Rearranging the equation, we get Here, the displacement is a sinusoidal function of time, which is the defining equation of simple harmonic motion. If the projection of motion of the rod is taken along the y-axis, the displacement of the point P dash on the y-axis will be given by this equation. This equation represents simple harmonic motion. So in the Mari, you can express the simple harmonic motion as expressions as function of time plus the omega the angle phi so omega t plus phi you know it is in time in time t it will cover that angle phi plus omega t so on the we can express as the functions as y is equal to a cos omega t plus phi because the bob keeps moving with respect to time here is a quick overview of simple harmonic motion This is all we have learned in this module of simple harmonic motion. How to express the simple harmonic motion as a periodic function of time. So, this is all about it. So, moving on. We look at the oscillations in the spring now. Okay, we will see some questions, simple questions, because then this thing 20 minutes are left. So we'll see a few questions and then we'll move on. For a second, I think somebody at the door, just let me come back.
Oh, yes, students. So I am back. So we'll see the questions. Yes, so here we see the question. So relationship could the kanga time period. So when t is when time period is t by 2 and omega can be expressed as pi, what happens to the acceleration? Go oh, there, ask me. So what would be the acceleration in this case? So simple harmonic motion use pani ninga just express it. So how can you express? So acceleration is nothing but change in velocity with respect to time. So a can be written as minus s omega square sin omega t. So optical dikla acceleration. So ringla. So ning in the values and substitute pani na what do you get? So, you will get acceleration as 0 in this case because the corresponding sine function sin 0 is anyways going to be 0. So, for omega equal to pi, what happens to sine function? So, for only even pi values, it is going to be there, but therefore for pi values, pi is nothing but so 0 to 2 pi when they vary. Pi, do not you think the sine function is going to cut the graph? At that point, it becomes 0. So, the value also becomes 0 in this case. Okay, next, at regular intervals of time, if the motion repeats itself, then what is this motion called? This is quite simple. Periodic motion. Periodic motion. Periodic motion. Periodic motion. Let's see this. So, regular intervals of time, they say. So, we will see. We'll, okay, periodic motion. So, let me click on segment. Yes, it's correct. Velocity of the periodic, okay. So, this one we have still not yet come here. Uh, yes, this is correct. This is easy. Which is a linear combination of sine and cosine functions? Which is a combination? Option C, sir. Option C, sir. Option C. F of t is equal to a sin omega t plus b cos omega t. So, a render function upon the resultant uh, function can be expressed as a summation of individual functions apart uh, using superposition. So, superposition of sine and cosine waveforms can be expressed like this. Very good. This is correct. Next one. The total number of oscillations produced by a body in one second is called what? Frequency. Frequency, sir. So, it is called as frequency. Okay. And great. So, the conceptual questions then based on the concept that we learned. So, let's go back. We'll go to the next module questions. In the in the equation given below, what is the value of angular velocity? Calculate pannanga. This is the displacement as a function of time given. Mm -hmm. Eight. So Eight, nama, general equation le represent pannu abdi na. Abdi represent pannu wo. X a is sin equal omega t. A sin omega t plus phi. Yeah, that is the general representation where phi is your phase phase angle. So which is the value of angular uh, velocity here? It is 8, eight sir. Yes. You, you are comparing, you will get it as 8. Omega is 8. Good. So, you get omega as 8. Next. All simple uh, harmonic motions are? Periodic. 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 They are periodic in nature. But are all periodic motions harmonic? No, sir. No, sir. Yes. Next. Simple harmonic motion is a projection of? What? Uniform circular motion. Uniform circular motion. If we look at the pendulum, it is a projection of uniform circular motion. Yes, very good. Okay. 
what is the displacement of particle in one time period in a simple harmonic motion? Zero. Zero. Yes, it is zero. It comes back to its original position. Good. Next, a simple pendulum is oscillating without damping. Okay, damping. Now, minimum park la. When we do damping, we'll come to this. Sitting la. We still not seen damping. Okay, now the motion of a particle moving in a circle with uniform speed can be. Speed. Speed. Yes, sir. Periodic and yes, sir. Periodic and simple harmonic motion. Is it? Okay. We'll see. No, it is not periodic and simple harmonic motion. I think somebody Oscillate said so. Oscillatory. Okay. See, moving in a circle, Namasono. Isn't it? So it can be periodic, but I don't think so. It might be harmonic, right? It's not coming back to its original. I mean, it's not in an oscillatory motion. It's not simple harmonic motion. For example, if we look at the animation, the uh, the movement of the sun. I mean, movement of the earth around the sun or moon around the earth. Okay, so they are all periodic, but it's not simple harmonic. Converse is not true. Correct, na? So here you should be careful. Okay, next, that is the displacement of the oscillator. Is given by y is equal to a sin omega t minus b cos omega t. We are asking what is the amplitude of this oscillator? What will be the amplitude? E option c sir. Root of a square plus b square. Root of a square plus b square. So can be expressed as this. Very good. Next question: A pendulum after some time becomes slow in motion and finally stop. What is the reason behind this? Earth's gravity. Earth's gravity, sir. Yeah, it is Earth's gravity. Then I'm going to discuss funny, no? So Earth's gravity. No, they are saying. Awesome. No. Why? Length of pendulum. So, number and the time period relationship, you are using funny, no? Earth's gravity may be one one of the reasons, but the main thing is because of and the t is equal to two pi under root l by g. I've done a relationship. Band it. So, how do you use funny, no? You will have to answer. So, which would be the answer? Appropriate answer would be. Length. Length of the pendulum. Mass of the pendulum, sir. Sure, it is mass of the pendulum. Okay. No. Atmospheric friction. Okay. See, they are saying it's atmospheric friction. Why do you think it's atmospheric friction? Because the air friction is also going to oppose it, isn't it? But length is not going to slow. Slowing and uh, increasing that is a different thing, but here atmospheric friction also comes into picture. So in that one they have told, but it's not necessarily atmospheric friction all the time. Even length also, as the length increases, obviously your pendulum, the speed also might vary. Sorry, so that is one of the reasons. Last question: A wristwatch, if keeps correct time at the equator when it is kept taken at the poles, what would happen to the wristwatch? Will it gain time, lose time, or keep the correct time, or it will stop giving time? Gain. Gains time. No. So, if it keeps correct time at the equator and you take it to the poles, again it continues to keep the correct time only. So time cannot be gained or it cannot be lost. Okay, so it would continue keeping the correct time because from the equator you are trying to move towards the pole zone. So it wouldn't gain or it wouldn't lose time. If I could, now my time is actually same everywhere. Universally, it is going to be the same thing. We say that they are ahead and they are just lagging. All of them, they are before us or they are after us. That doesn't mean that they have gained or they have lost time. Not necessarily. Kingla, so that is the mean. So going back, so with this we will wind up today's lecture. So we have looked at you know three important concepts today. So we looked at what is periodic motion. Adi nama cover paniyum do. And today's module we looked at what is simple and harmonic motion and uniform circular motion and the force. So force laws. Uh, yeah, we have seen the oscillations of the spring. So this is what we have learned in today's module. 
and of simple questions pertaining to these conceptual questions is what we saw. So, competitive questions we will see once we have covered this entire chapter. We will go to the competitive section. Okay, so with that, we will wind up. So, any doubts you can ask. Yeah, thank you, Manish. Ah, so, what is the meaning of the term PACE? PACE, P A C E. Sir, P H A S E. P H A S C phase. So phase. Uh, phase one, the, it is nothing but the distinct time period from the initial position of the simple harmonic motion. It is starting from a particular part. So for example, say it starts from time period t is equal to zero. So phase of the with respect to the time, it is going to change. There is a distinct time period. So you call that as a phase angle, phase notation. So, omega t plus phi of ding roller. With respect to time, it is getting added up. The phase is something extra which adds up to the initial time period. So, that is a phase. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 